Hey, what is up, guys? It's your host, Joey Sturgis, here back at the Drumforge YouTube channel. Thanks for checking this video out. I am going to be showing you some really awesome stuff today because I'm going to show you how to integrate drum shots, the latest one-shot drum sample pack from Drumforge, into your session. We're going to be doing this with Cubase. And you don't need any extra software. There's actually a sampler built right into Cubase, which is really great for our tutorial today. So let's jump into what we're doing here. I'm gonna be showing you how to set up these different channels so that you can trigger these kicks and snares to play when you want them to play. And you're gonna do it all pretty much automatically. Um, it's gonna be pretty cool. So as you can see, um, I've got these MIDI tracks and these audio tracks. I want to show you uh, just real quick what it sounds like so you get a, an idea of what the final result is going to be like, and then we'll show you how to get there. So I'm just going to hit play solo these drums and show you what before and after sounds like. Here we go. All right, so let's check it out. First step is let's get rid of all of our hard work and start from scratch. Boom. First step is to add yourself a new track and what you're gonna choose is called Sampler. Now the Sampler tracks are basically this new thing in Cubase where you can kind of uh, tell it to play back a sound um, whenever it is triggered by MIDI. So we're gonna actually have three of these. We're gonna have a kick. So drum shots, kick. Then we're gonna duplicate this. Then we're gonna have drum shots, snare. And we're gonna duplicate again. And we're gonna do drum shots, room. Now when you do this, um, there's something called a root key. And what the root key means is what, you know, whatever sound that you drag into the sampler, where does it start in terms of pitch? We're gonna actually choose this to be C1 because that's kind of the common for drums. You don't have to choose C1, you could choose like C3, like the default, but that would mean that you need to have your bass sample at C3 um, or your MIDI signal at C3. So I like to do C1, that's kind of the GM MIDI standard, and that's what I wanna use. Now the next step is we gotta get MIDI notes in here. Now one thing you could do, obviously, is you could have a MIDI track and you could draw your own MIDI notes in there, and as long as they're C1, actually any note's gonna trigger the, 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 the sample, but a C1 is gonna trigger it at the right pitch, and that's important. But you need to click on the sampler, and then it says drop an audio sample here, um, this is where you'll jump into the finder and once you're into the finder, you are going to navigate to your samples and grab one of the sounds that you want to use. So for example, on the kick, we could pick one of these kicks. Please don't steal our samples. 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 I like kick two. Please don't steal our samples. Please don't steal our samples. So kick two is what I'm gonna choose. I'll drag it here. Bam. Now, from here you've got a couple of options and these are really important because it's gonna change the behavior of your sample. Um, the first thing you want to decide is how long does the sample play? Well, right now the sample is gonna play as long as the MIDI note is. So if you were to drag this MIDI note, like a whole bar, and hit play on this thing, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a whole bar of sample playback. Now you notice how the playhead stopped right there, but this playhead kept going. That's because that's where this bar ended. Um, and also you probably notice that the kick sounded really weird. That's because our root note is still set to C3. We wanna set that to C1 because we're triggering the kick sound 
with the C1 note. Please don't steal our samples. If I was to move this up to C2, you can hear how the pitch goes up. But if we go back to our sampler and change the root note to C2, we're gonna get that uh, regular pitch again. Please don't steal our samples. So really just a, a, a matter of matching the root key to the input note. Okay, now it doesn't matter how long this note is because really it's just a drum sample. So we kind of just have to tell it when to start. We don't really care when it ends. Please don't steal our samples. But on default settings, when it ends is when the note ends, when the MIDI note ends. So please, that would be too short for, for my taste. So what I would do is click on this little button right here called one shot. When you click on that, it's gonna play the whole sample back every single time you play a MIDI note. Please. So it goes from beginning to end, and there might be some low end frequencies here that we wanna preserve, and that's kind of why you would wanna do that. Now, the thing is, do we wanna go through the whole song and manually program the, the kick drums? Hell no. So, what you need to do next is go ahead and take the kick uh, audio track. Make sure you have the whole thing consolidated so that it's just like one audio file from beginning to end. Double click on that, open this arrow here, and then go to hit points and hit edit hit points. Now what happens is you get this threshold control and based on how low you, you put the threshold, it determines how many kick hits you're going to trigger. Um, and so this is a way of triggering kick hit, hits without having any kind of additional software. What I typically will do is just kind of slowly lower it until I see it grabbing all the hits. And as soon as I've done that, I'll click on this little thing here called Create MIDI Notes. Once you click that, it's gonna ask you a couple of questions. Like for example, what kind of velocity mode do you want? Dynamic velocity will preserve these different um, volume differences between hits. Fixed velocity is just gonna make every single hit the same velocity. Uh, with one shot sample, you kind of have a a pretty big decision to make here because with dynamic velocity, you're gonna get these different volume, uh, these volume differences with the kick hits, which might actually make them sound a little bit more real and maybe even more fitting to your production. Uh, for me, I'm going for consistency, so I'm gonna choose fixed velocity. Now, it's gonna ask you what velocity do you want? I'm gonna say 127. My pitch is gonna be C1 because that's our root note of our kick. The length is about a 16th note, which is fine. And then the destination is like, where do you want it? I'm gonna say new MIDI track. Hit okay, close this window, scroll down. There's our new MIDI track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna cut that MIDI track out, scroll back up to my sampler and go to edit functions, paste relative to cursor. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if I just paste it blindly, it's gonna move it over here and I don't wanna move it. So doing functions and uh, paste relative to cursor actually keeps it in place of where it was originally copied from. So now that we've done that, we can listen to our kick. Please don't steal our samples, please. And if we combine it with the audio. We can see that they're happening at the same time. Now, obviously there's a little bit of a volume difference, so I'm gonna add JST clip in here just to make up the difference. And finally check my phase. Cool. So, that's our kick, all set up. We can do the same thing for the snare. So we're gonna open the snare. Go to hit points, edit hit points. Set that threshold to how we like it. Right now it's set pretty good. Create MIDI notes. Fixed velocity, same situation here. Although if you're doing snare, you might consider dynamic velocity because that volume difference is gonna be big, uh, especially for snare. I'm going for consistency again, so I'm not gonna be doing that. I will go ahead and cut this and paste it here relative to the cursor. And cool, so let's see what that sounds like. Oh, we need a sample. So open the sampler, open the finder, grab our snare. 
Please don't steal our samples. 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 Let's try five. So drag five on. Boom, there it is. And click on that one shot guy. Change the root key to C1. Here we go. Please don't steal our samples. 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 Next thing we need is a snare room. Since the snare room is going to trigger from the snare, we're going to just copy that MIDI track and paste it right underneath. It's the exact same thing. All we need to do is drag a different sample in. So let's choose a snare room. Please don't steal our samples. 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 Please don't. I like one, so I'm going to drag that in. Click on one shot, set the root key to C1. Let's hear that. Please don't steal our samples. 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 So here's without our samples. And with samples. Pretty dramatic improvement already. And a perfect example of how you can use drum shots real quickly in Cubase with your mix to pump up whatever song you're working on, whether it's rock, metal, or country, Check out Drum Shots. Joel Wanasek is the signature pack. Links are in the description. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, smash that bell button to get notified when we upload new videos, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. As you heard in this brief demonstration, these samples crush pretty hard and are gonna sound fantastic in your rock and metal mixes. You're gonna get 36 of my most used one shots today for only 19 bucks. It's no brainer, so smash the link below and grab your copy of Drum Shots, Joel Wanasek today.